blaze of the arts culture in us we want to thank you for viewing as usual uh, tonight we're going to deal with the arts and a touch of culture and we're going to discuss that fine music that you've been hearing that they can keep playing please from uh, Amiel push on right there and uh, Brother Amiel is, is minister, Saw Amiel also, although tonight, we, well, he, well, let me just do it right. So this is minister, Saw Amiel, right. from the Kingdom of Yah, which is Demona, Israel, right? right? right. So, so and, and a little later on, we might even talk about the different uh, movements of various Hebrews, which I learned from America, trying to get back there also. Amen. But tonight we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about the song of the deliverance, a new genre of music on the planet, um, where we create music that is designed to uplift, mot motivate, and inspire, and to reflect a higher state of consciousness in the lifestyle. And that's the type of music we're listening to now. That's the kind of music. You know, uh, what's the name of your uh, company, by the way? My company is called Positive Music Works Media. Does it, does it really work? Oh, it works. <laughs> I'm hearing it. <laughs> I'm hearing it for the first time and loving it. There is something very warm and embracing about it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the philosophy behind it? Um, before we do that, we have this map up here because, um, you know, being in Israel or people from America, we're not going to go to it yet, but people in America, they don't really know too much about Africa. So a little further on, we're going to have Saramil give you a little update on where, where Africa is, what parts of it are relevant to the Bible, to you, to us as African Americans, as Pan Americans all around the globe. Right. So tell us a little though right now about, um, about this song right here. Well, this song is a spoken word song that I did uh, a number of years ago, and it's designed to, uh, to elicit a reality of a spiritual love. So we don't say that we fall in love. We say that we rise in love. Anything connecting to falling is relative to going down. So now you understand why most people's relationships don't work. Because they fall. Oh, I never saw that before. They've fallen in love. <laughs> they fall. we, say we say we're rising in love. So this is a song that's dedicated to rising in love. Yes, I'm going to listen to the lyrics. It says what the food is to the mouth is what words are to the ears. So words feed the ears, and those words go through the mechanism of the ear and into the brain. Mm -hmm. So if you put harmful words into your ears, it's going to cause some disturbance in your mentality. Our job is to create a music uh, that we call the songs of deliverance to deliver some lyrics and a peaceful sound to you that would help in your mental health because our people need to escalate in their mental health which will help them in their physical health and they need a music that reflects the desire to live an elevated uh, an elevated lifestyle from an elevated consciousness because that's what creates your lifestyle is your consciousness so if you have a, a uh, chaotic destructive lifestyle where you're always dealing with some drama or whatever that's relative to your mind now 
most of the music that's created in this uh, these urban environments are a reflection of the of the mentality and so they continue to support the lifestyle of drama we're saying there has to be a music that delivers you from that and we call it songs of deliverance so the music is designed that when you listen to it it seeps into your consciousness and it gives you an alternative way of thinking it gives you alternative vibrations to tune into so that it'll uplift motivate and inspire you and it'll begin to elevate you out of that drama because it'll help you make better decisions which is the key to life, to make decisions that enhance your life, that uplift your life, that inspire and motivate, that deliver you to a realm where you can be more assured that when you get up in the day, you're going to have a good day. And when you lay down at night, you're going to have good dreams. So when you wake up the next day, you have a good day. So, so it's an extreme contrast to what's popular and current right now. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I was just doing a show with uh, Dr. Bill uh, Willeford, Willeford, who has his butter product. So it's hip hop clothing, right? Right. And while we do the interview, it occurred to me he had pictures of young black men and women together, happy with a smile. Mm. And I thought, what a shame that has to be, you know, a, a, a strange sight for me. What a shame that I have to look at, he made me a smile and they're happy together, you know, so he's trying to do the same thing you are, you know, use what we're using, but let's, work, let's be responsible. I think you told me before that was like a redemptive philosophy redemptive that philosophy. you have in the kingdom of y'all. Right. Tell me a little bit about what redemptive, responsible philosophy means. Well, all of the, everything that we do is relative to redemption or redemptive. Our businesses, our, our educational system, our health system is for redemption to bring a people from a lower state of existence to a higher state of existence which is to redeem them to bring them out of the chaos and the trials and the tribulations see right now trials and tribulations and drama is the rule but if you listen to this song which is title cut to the CD we tell you to push on that we have to fight for this the, the, the assault that has been uh, perpetuated against the people of the planet by the perpetuators of this music and, this, and, and these violent sounds and these, you know, o uh, overt and covert sexual uh, uh, spirits in the music. We have to really work hard to fight that. We have to fight through that. That's why most people, you know, they they expect some calamity. They expect some drama. That's, it's in the music. It's in the movies. It's in the television programs. It's in the radio broadcast. It's everywhere. And so it's an assault. It's an assault. It's an assault, yeah. it's an assault on the spiritual development of mankind. And it's there deliberately. And so, because that is deliberate, we have to be just as deliberate. I'm not jumping up saying, well, you, know, you all should stop doing that music. What I'm saying is you should encourage positive music. You should encourage uplifting and motivating and inspiring music because that's what you want. I remember in the early days, I used to do seminars, and I remember in the early days that if you cussed in front of your grandmama or your, or your mama or your daddy, you get a beating, they wash your mouth out with soap and everything. But what's significant is that now, these days, the grandmamas and the, and the fathers and the mothers are going out and buying the music that's assaultive and bringing it in the house and letting it blare in the house. And what it does, it creates the environment for drama and the environment for violence and the environment for, for accidents and chaos and all those things. And that's how powerful sound and words are because thought precedes substance. So everything that's been created, including this television studio, came from somebody's thought and came from somebody's word. They had a thought, they spoke it to somebody, and then some energy was put behind it and was created. Nothing that has been created has been created any other way than that. So if that is the case, then a man needs to understand that in order for him to have a positive and a beautiful and uplifting life, he has to think it, he has to speak it, and then he has to put the energy behind to work. So in this song called Push On, 
The idea, I talk about the Wright brothers as, as it goes on. I talk about the Wright brothers and say because they thought the man could fly. So they made makeshift wings and stopped jumping out of trees. That was kind of funny when it first started. It could, yeah, it was funny. I saw a lot of those first trials. As we know it today, I mean, the, uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the rocket ship took off yesterday, which was a result of their work. They pushed on. No, they took a thought, and they followed it, and they put energy behind it. They talked about it. They put energy behind it. Many in the space program today. And I'm saying that that is the rule for life. But, you know, you mentioned something a little while ago. Uh, you know, later we're, we're going to have uh, Jeffrey Winston do a show also on this jazz, the state of jazz. And when we were there, Lucy Florence, the other last week, I remember several people mentioned at some point it does become the responsibility of the parent to offer to almost force feed or to bring in some other type of music or to regulate it to some degree. What do you think about that? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the absolute on it because, you know, we study the scriptures from the ancient Hebrew. And the scripture that says, it says, how it translated to us is honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be prolonged upon the earth. But that's not the correct translation. The correct translation is honor thy father and thy mother that they may prolong thy days upon the earth. You see, children, the only God they know is their parents. That's the only God they, they don't know no other God. They see it in their parents. So if you come up in an environment where you think the children are your future, the roles are reversed. Because you're supposed to be the children's future. How are you going? Can you imagine a 13, 14 year old, 17 year old, or 20 or 30 year old running something today? Look at the 30 year olds who's making zillions of dollars. What are they doing with it? So is that the future? No. Spiritual parents must guide and direct children in order for them to be spiritual. As a matter of fact, I have a song on this CD called Babies to Angels, and it talks about a child born in, in this day and time. They don't, they don't go to the angelic qualities. They have to fight through hell and made to ride at some sense of, of, of their angelic nature when they get 50 or 60 where they decide to do the right thing. And to, but where they started out, they started from babies to hell. And I'm saying that we need to flip that. But the way we have to flip that is relative to the scriptures. It say, honor thy father and thy mother that they may prolong thy days upon the earth. You know, I, I, I don't want to take you far away from that, but this is bad. Who is this sin? This is myself as a duet with myself and India Ari. India Ari? Yes, it was a You know, I'm sitting there saying, now I know that voice. <laughs> You're talking, I'm trying to be polite. I'm like, right. Right. ooh, right. yeah. yeah we, <laughs> we, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we met each other in Atlanta years ago, and we developed a very great friendship. And uh, when I was in the studio, she came. If I went to the studio, you know, with her, we, you know, we came up with some ideas or whatever. And I helped her, you know, with the, with the deal that she has now. I helped her because uh, she wanted to play guitar. I, when she first started playing guitar, I used to go around to the open mic nights with her and, and support her. As a matter of fact, you recognize what she has. Yeah, I recognize what she has, and some of the chords that she plays in some of the earlier songs are chords that we that I shared with her. Yeah. And so we've had this friendship over the years, uh, and of course she's gone on to another level of uh, in the music industry where she's a diva and, and, and an icon. And I'm blessed and to have sister. had that. And she's still a sister, though. And I'm blessed to have had that relationship with her, and. Uh, our restaurants, she eats at all of our restaurants when she's on tour, our soul vegetarian restaurants, she eats our food. When she comes out here, you know, she eats at a taste of life, our, 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 our vegan. Now, hold on, hold on. We can't just do it like we got to give them a little more explanation. So the vegan food, let, let's explain difference to, to, to the average viewer. What is vegan? What is so-called vegetarian? Okay, the short side. Yeah. In this world. And just like we're talking about the music, there's a music that reflects the negative aspects of this world. Well, what this world has a tendency to do, anything positive, what they do is they diminish it. When we used to say, when I used to come up, I used to say I'm a vegetarian. I didn't eat any meat, no milk, eggs, cheese, no dairy or anything. And then what happened, Webster took the word 
and said that you could eat poultry. And so the poultry now is being a vegetarian, you could eat fish, you could eat chicken, <laughs> eggs, milk, and cheese. Now we're saying that vegetarians, before they took the word and changed the definition, we could say we're vegetarian. But after a while we couldn't say we're vegetarian because people would be offering us meat and milk and eggs and cheese. So later on it became another designation called vegan. Vegan. Okay, vegan. You, where you eat without any animal products uh, whatsoever. Where you used to be with vegetarian. Well, you see, like so you, you're the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> they took the word. <laughs> they took the word. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. But, but wait, also share with them the results from in Demona, Israel, the medical results of all your people that are eating this way. Because that's most all important. Of, all of our people are eating that way. We were under a study for two years. Now, I have to show you, if you can, with the map, this is where we are. And many of our people are in different parts of the United States. So we repatriated all the way here to Israel. Right? So a lot of people don't know where, that's why we have the map. Lots of people don't know where Israel is. They don't know where. They don't know that Egypt is in Africa. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't know so, that. So we could have and that's another the map. show. <laughs> which we'll deal with later. But uh, the Meharry Institute is in, is in, in Nashville, Tennessee came from Nashville all the way here, and they did a two-year study of our community. We were all vegans. And what they found is that we had arrested the aging process. Now, it wasn't just the food. It was also the lifestyle of no stress. So it's a combination of things. Lifestyle of no stress, the food, the vegan food. Well, the food is a central the element. The food is a, but are there components of the life because you got to eat. Right? And, the, and we have... Let's talk a little bit about what stress-free, and then we'll get back to the music. But well, it's a stress-free environment because we, we have our own music, and our own music, with music reflects uh, our state of consciousness. Just like you hear the music now, that reflects our consciousness. So we have a non-violent lifestyle. As a matter of fact, we have a few generations of children. Our children now, we have children who were born who are now 40 years old and have never lost a peer. There have been no drive-bys, no crack addicts, no drug addicts, no crimes of passion. Hallelujah. A, a, a uh, non-stressful <laughs> lifestyle. And what we're saying is that it's a combination of things. It's a combination of how you educate it. It's a combination of, uh, of the entertainment that you absorb, the food that you eat, the people-to-people -people ecology, how you treat one another. And, you care and having another. God first. And having a spiritual uh, base. Having God, having order and structure in the context of spirituality. Which means that our civilization is rooted in truth. Ah. Truth about life, love, liberty, pursuit of happiness, you, me, and who you are, all of that. Who you are, to get to the truth. Because the truth sets you free from being bound by living the lie. And it's the lie that keeps the, 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 the stressful lifestyle. Now, hold, now hold. we're going to go back to the music. Now, I'm really loving it. This is like, hmm. This song right here. Song. This is, um, India's doing the background in this song. Yeah. And I'm talking about... So you play the guitar and the fingers. Right. right. Mm -hmm. percussions. Well, in this song, what I'm talking about is how women are portrayed in the hood. See, this whole thing of using the B word and all that kind of stuff and people being, and women being called outside of their names and, 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 and women responding to the denigration and all that, that came from somewhere. That came from, from a, uh, a uh, system that sought to continue to denigrate a people. And if, if you can denigrate your, your women, then you, you create a base lifestyle that creates base children. So in this song, I'm talking about a spiritual brother who meets Keisha. And Keisha, I just picked a name because I was riding to Atlanta one day and I said I wanted to make a song about a sister in the hood, what they would call a hood rat, which is what the hip hoppers and the, and the rappers call the sisters, or they call them chicken heads or whatever they call them. People who don't really have a consciousness or an understanding they just grew up in an environment where they've learned to accept these, these uh, the denigration and the degradation. Uh, 
So I just I said, man, what's the most popular song? And the women respond to it. And go ahead, respond to it. <laughs> I said, what's the most popular name? I just want to pick up the name. And the most popular name was Keisha. At that time, everybody's naming their daughter is Keisha. <laughs> so I talk about Keisha. I'm gonna give you the 411 because I know you live in the 911. And as a spiritual man, I see you as a queen. I see you in a, in a, in a more beautiful and a more positive environment. And I'm gonna fight for you. So I developed this relationship with this sister who I have to help extract from that degrading and that uh, assaultive environment. And it's a spiritual brother who goes in there and works with her and works with her and works with her until she feels herself come back to some 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 semblance of life and positivity. And they queen that she was. And they queen that she was. So in here I'm talking about it ain't the stuff that's happening in the hood. It ain't all right. Yeah. It's, no matter what anybody says, all those negative things, it ain't all right. No, it's not. When you get, when you begin to elevate from that, then it becomes all right. But you ain't gonna tell me roaches and rats and, and dealing with paying bills all the time and being oppressed and looking in the mirror for the police. You ain't gonna tell me that people love that. They don't love that. They've learned to put up with it. And they put up with it so long, they think that that's living. So the reality of it, with positive music works, with the uh, kingdom of Yah and all that. All of this is reflective of coming out of that environment. Not just for inner city blacks, the whole world is under that assault. In every land, every culture, they're under that assault. Children in South Africa didn't cut down all the trees and, 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 and polluted the waters and all this. I mean, the whole earth. The whole earth moans and groans, awaiting the expectation of spiritual beings who would come and influence the planet to an extent where we cause people to make better decisions. And that's what it's all about. It makes a difference whether you come from China or you come from, from South America or you come from the North Pole. You know, I mean, you got people, you got whole cultures that are disappearing as we speak today. With the, with the global warming here, the, the big glaciers and all that, oh, yeah, and the Eskimos who lived on them. They're like melting, right? They're melting, that means the thousands. people acting like it's all right. But they're not acting like it's all right because thousands of years of culture are gone. I'm talking about this has happened in the day and time that we live in. Thousands of years, they can't, they don't have nothing to teach their children. They don't have no culture on them. The culture was based upon the cold and the environment and the hunting and all that kind of All that's gone. The Inuit. All that's gone. And I'm saying that the whole earth is under an assault of a state of mind that seeks destruction. And you can see it. It seems that way. I'm, I'm so depressed looking at the newspaper. I mean, literally, like, like. What's the meaning of it all? Well, well I'm I mean, saying, what is the meaning of it all? But that's the reality. Let me depict something for you. You're going to like this. Mm -hmm. So you're a meat eater or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I am. And you're under the, <laughs> you're under the oppression of, of going to work every day and dealing with the traffic and all that kind of stuff. I come from an era where people who like that, they say, hey, let's take a ride through the country. Well, why would they want to go to, to the country? Because they want to get out of this oppressive environment. So they're driving out the country. While they're driving, they smelling McDonald's. <laughs> they smelling Kentucky Fried Chicken. All these smells in the air going out. When they get down the long country road and they driving, their whole spirit changes. They begin to relax and everything. Start hearing the sound of birds. Hearing the sound of birds. <laughs> now, check this. Same birds they couldn't hear before. Right. Now you go buy a farm. Right? You don't even look, you look at the farm, you look at the farm animals different. <laughs> and when you see the cows, you don't see McDonald's hamburgers. When you see the chickens, you don't see Kentucky Fried Chicken. When you see them, you see aesthetics. <laughs> you see the creation in its array. Flowers and trees and animals and, 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 and uh, all kinds of birds, flora, fauna, all of that. And what, and what that does to you, it connects you to the creation in its aesthetics, the sounds, the colors, the textures, the vibrations. That was enough. That was Make called life. Take a trip. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, that was, that's why we go to Israel. That was called life. That was called life. This whole thing of living in concrete and 
and glass and, and polymers and, and chemicals and all that kind of stuff. This is what this has evolved. That mentality of destruction has evolved an environment to that. And we're saying, and the reason why I can be happy and I can be jovial, because I, I didn't stop. I didn't stop and say, well, this is the way it is, that's it. I ran into brothers and sisters and all kind of people from all over the planet who just weren't going to take no more. We said, hey, we don't like it the way it is, let's make it the way we want. We don't like drama, let's make a drama-less environment. Well, hold on. He just gave me one, the one minute, I guess that's one minute to the show, because I've been dipping, go. I've been enjoying the music. I, I hate that they had to stop. But we want to give uh, some props to your spiritual leaders and so on. Yes, absolutely. When I met in, in, in the uh, early, uh, late 70s, I met Ben Ami, who was the spiritual head of the Kingdom of Yah, and Prince Asiel, who is the ambassador of the Kingdom of Yah, and through them, we have, uh, I found out about this stressless life, lifestyle, the self-determination, picking ourselves up, uh, ourselves up our own bootstraps, and creating the environment that we felt that would be better for our children. In Demona, Israel. In Demona, Israel. Now, to that one too. Now, in Demona, Israel. <laughs> now, that's in the Negev, the southern portion of Israel. Okay. Now, the reason why there is because that's the Holy Land. And at some point, we're going to we have another very show. Cool. We'll, well, talk very cool. we'll just talk until we run out of time. Tell us a little bit about if this all used to be Africa, at least before the Suez Canal, real quick. What they before the Romans came and conquered this area, this area was not called Africa. There was an, a, a, a Roman general called Africanus, and when they <laughs> when they conquered this land, they called it Africa after Africanus. Now. Um, Prior to that, when you go to your scriptures, you find out what the name was. It was called Eden, pronounced correctly. Like Eden. most people pronounce Eden. Uh, Eden. So the Holy Land was eastward in Eden. The reason or, the, or, or the what they call a paradise. Teach <laughs> minister Sar Amiel, and we've been talking about. We've been listening to his CV, and um, we have been talking about positive music words. This is a whole lifestyle, redemptive lifestyle. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. I thank you. Yeah. Always perfect. My honor and my <laughs> pleasure <laughs> to be with you.